In this week, we will look at the tools from consumer decision making, which is usually the forte of uh, intermediate micro or advanced micro theory. Why are we doing so? The consumer decision making theory usually uh, gives us some tools to analyze how a consumer comes to a decision uh, to buy uh, between one commodity and the other. Or how does a consumer decide to buy a consumption bundle? Now this bundle could be anything. For example, uh, think of a consumption bundle as number of cups of coffee during the day and number of bagels that you will have during the day. Now what is the optimal consumption bundle that uh, you would buy of coffee and bagels? For this, we will have to figure out how to represent your preferences over coffee and bagel. Do you like coffee and bagels in a particular proportion? For example, you just like one coffee and one bagel? Or do you, uh, or you don't mind moving around the amount of coffee and amount of bagel, but you would definitely want to have both in your consumption bundles. Or you don't really mind uh, switching between coffee and uh, bagel, and so your consumption bundle might actually have just coffee or just bagel. So we all are different consumers, and we all have different preferences over commodities. And if I, if we go on asking different consumers about their preferences over a cup of coffee and bagel, uh, each of us would have some different description. However, microeconomic theory of consumer decision making allows us to represent these preferences using the concept of utility and indifference curves, which we will look at uh, in this lecture. But before we go there, the reason why we are doing uh, the consumer decision making theory is the choice between coffee and bagel and the way the consumer is going to choose between them given the way his preferences are, given what is the price and uh, price of coffee and bagel and given what is the total amount the consumer has uh, uh, to spend, the same framework we can apply to the consumption savings decision that a consumer takes. Remember, from the last week, we talked about one of the fundamental trade-offs uh, that financial markets facilitate is, that, uh, is a mutually beneficial exchange between uh, future consumption and current consumption. Underlying that trade-off or decision-making is the decision of consumption and savings or consu current consumption and future consumption. All that we learn in this week can be applied to the choice of those two commodities as well. So let's go ahead and talk about utility. A utility, which is a concept that we'll be using to rank consumption bundles uh, and allow consumer uh, preferences to be represented uh, with the use of simple diagrams uh, like the indifference curve. Before we go ahead, let's revise uh, what preferences are and how we are going to uh, sort out between bundles. So, excuse me. So let's say X and Y are two consumption bundles. So X is something like it has 10 apples for the current period and 12 apples for the future period. And Y is something like 13 apples and 15 apples. Then, uh, when we say that x is preferred to y, we use the symbol uh, which looks like the greater than sign, uh, with the greater than sign pointing towards uh, the bundle that is preferred. If, uh, both, if the consumer is indifferent between these two bundles, then we use a little squiggle uh, to show that. When one bundle is at least as preferred as the other, then we use a combination of the greater than and the squiggle together. So that is how we will uh, display ranking of bundles uh, that the consumers make. Let's go to the idea of utility. 
So what is a utility function? A utility function represents a preference relation. So the ones which we saw just right now, whether a good is preferred to the other, whether a bundle is preferred to the other bundle, or whether the consumer is indifferent between two, these two bundles. What utility function does is uh, a bundle which is preferred over the other bundle is assigned a higher number, showing its uh, higher ranking over the other bundle. So, for example, if x prime is preferred to x double prime, then uh, the utility function would assign a number, something like 20 to x prime and 10 to x double prime. If opposite is the case, x double prime is preferred to x prime, then uh, the utility function would assign a higher number, something like 25 to x double prime and 10 to x prime. And they are, if they are indifferent, both get the same number. So utility function assigns numbers which we use to decide which bundle uh, is of the higher ranking. Uh, notice I have said that we are talking about ranking here. We are not talking about measuring utility. We are not taking the cardinal approach where utility is measurable. What we are doing here is we are assuming that utility uh, is ordinal. We can rank bundles according to their uh, satisfaction that they give, give to each of us. And that could be different. I could uh, give a ranking to a particular bundle over other, and you could do exactly opposite. The rule that the utility function specifies is that whoever is doing the ranking should give some higher number to the bundle that is preferred and a lower number to the bundle that is not preferred. And the second important point is that the difference between the numbers that is assigned for these two bundles uh, does not mean anything. So for example, if x prime gets 20 and x double prime gets 10, then all we can say is x prime is preferred to x double prime. We cannot say that it is uh, x prime is away from x double prime uh, in terms of satisfaction by 10 units. That difference of 10 between these two numbers has nothing uh, in terms of, or gives you nothing in terms of uh, how much more the other bundle is desired. All we know is that the other bundle is ranked above uh, x double prime. So utility is an ordinal concept. That is, we are ordering commodities, ordering commodity bundles. Example, if u of x is equal to 6 and if u of y is equal to 2, then bundle x is strictly preferred to bundle y. But as we said just now, uh, x is not three times as much preferred as is y. Now, uh, once this idea is clear, let's use uh, or let's develop a graphical representation of utility functions. So let's consider bundles something like 4, 1, 2, 3, and 2, 2. You will notice that all of these bundles uh, uh, have different pairings of numbers. So for example, uh, the bundle 4, 1, 4 and 1 uh, in our parlance would mean that the consumer is going to eat four apples in the first period and is, is leaving one apple for the second period. In the second bundle, he consumes two apples in the current period and leaves three apples for the next period and so on. Now, suppose uh, the bundle 2, 3 is preferred to 4, 1, okay? And in turn, uh, bundle 4, 1 and bundle 2, 2, between these two bundles, the consumer is indifferent, okay? Now, assign to these bundles any numbers that preserve the preference ordering. Example, u of 2, 3 could be 6, u of 4, 1 could be uh, 4 and the same number we could give to u of 2, 2. These numbers we will call them as utility levels. An indifference curve contains equally preferred bundles, which means that all the bundles on uh, one particular indifference curve 
have the same utility number assigned to them. Which basically means that the consumer prefers all these bundles equally on the curve. So for example, 4, 1 and 2, 2 get the number 4 and therefore both of these bundles are on the same indifference curve. However, the bundle 2, 3 is preferred to the other bundles and therefore it gets number 6. It lies on a different indifference curve. Now, how does this look on a graph? So uh, we have this representation here. Uh, the first uh, graph here, the first indifference curve, which is given by this black line, uh, is the indifference curve that goes through two bundles. One is the 4, 1, and the other one is uh, the 2, 2 bundle. So th these are the purple and the red bundles that we have. Now these are uh, these give you same utility. They uh, we assign them four as a number. The two three bundle, on the other hand, we assigned five as a number. So it clearly lies on a different indifference curve. In general, an indifference curve which signifies a higher utility ranking would lie to the right hand side, as compared to an indifference curve which gives a lower utility ranking. So when you go towards the origin, you reduce the level of, or you reduce the uh, utility ranking. When you go away from the origin, then you increase the utility ranking. But notice uh, in this particular figure, uh, we only have bundles on X and Y axis, or commodities which form the bundles on X and Y axis. And we are still talking about utility which is the third variable that we have. Can we use uh, a graph where we can have both the commodities as well as represent utility? So let's see how this works. So here, uh, the two axes that we saw earlier in the diagram uh, are, are actually on, uh, you can imagine this as a floor. And on the floor, on one axis, you have bundle X. Uh, sorry, commodity X, and on the other axis, you have some other commodity. And we make bundles out of them. So for example, the purple line is basically a uh, 4-1 bundle. Then uh, the same uh, is the red line, which is a 2-2 bundle, and both get 4-4 four, four, uh, utility rankings. So they are at the same level, and you can see this. Uh, how these two points are aligned. So if I join them, they're going to be at the same level. However, six is a higher number and therefore you not only grow more on one axis or both, but you also climb up on the utility axis to go till the six. And this is a higher utility number. Now let's work with some 3D visualization uh, that can that brings about the nature of uh, the utility function, the shape of the utility function, and it also gives us another way of uh, visualizing how uh, indifference curves line up on an x-y space. But before we go there, uh, let's take uh, a break here. Uh, please solve a quiz uh, which follows this lecture and then go on to the next 15 minute uh, video. Thank you.